Brighton, West Sussex, home to students, young professionals, and on a sunny day, tourists. Nearly a third of the city's homes are privately let, well above the national average. In fact, the city is the local authority with the second highest proportion of private rented property outside the capital. So, how are private renters here faring with the sector's rising rents and an even bigger rise in demand? Hello. Hi. I'm Sam. How are you Hi, doing? Sam. I'm uh, Daisy. I'm Ramona. Uh, welcome to our flat. Well, thanks. How long have you guys lived here for? Ooh, about four years now, I'd say. Yeah. Daisy and Ramona, both in their 20s, have had to answer those questions. The couple invited me into their home near the seafront, where, in a matter of weeks, they'll be forced to leave. Yeah, great. Uh, can You can almost see the sea from, from here, or yeah, not quite? Yeah, you your neck. <laughs> Apparently a sea view. <laughs> Our contract was capped at a 5% per year increase. Um, and then shortly after the mortgage crisis and interest rate situation happened, we were contacted asking to raise our rent by 12%. Um, in response to that, we, we cited our contract and basically said, well, we have a capped contract. Um, and then following that, very shortly afterwards, received a Section 21 notice. So how did it feel when you got that email telling you you were being evicted? It's very upsetting because it's sort of a situ like a situation in which you're quite powerless. Um, there is very little I can do to sort of stay in this place that I've lived in for the past four years, um, which has been my home every day becomes a lot more stressful and a lot more insecure. And yeah. That's really affected you. Yeah. Um, yeah. What do you think's behind your Section 21? I think there's a bit of a panic in relation to um, the renters, rents, renters' Reform Bill. Um, I think they don't know if they're going to be able to do Section 21 uh, evictions anymore in, I don't know, six months' time. And so they're just trying to get at, squeeze as much profit out as possible or sell up, move things out of the way. So has the prospect of reform without delivery exacerbated the situation in the short term? Now in May of this year, the government announced it planned to abolish Section 21. Now there isn't any official data available to point to the number of Section 21 evictions since then, but Citizens Advice have told this programme that in the past couple of months, it's seen a rise in the number of calls to its helpline specifically on this issue. So if things are getting choppier for tenants, what's driving it? Well, it could be down to a few different factors, including the use of Section 21 returning to pre-pandemic levels. So we've come to Birkenhead to meet Andrew, who's been a landlord for 25 years. He says with the scrapping of no-fault evictions, he'll have to rely on a different bit of housing legislation, Section 8, where landlords have to justify an eviction. Andrew says it's more expensive and time-consuming. I think the upcoming abolition of Section 21 has encouraged some landlords to advance their plans. They've taken that decision to, to issue Section 21 notices now because they don't want to be left with just the Section 8 route. Uh, and he says that. more regulation is one of the factors driving landlords out of the market. With the increase in mortgage rates, a lot of landlords are looking to sell. Uh, we're working towards, uh, at some stage in the next four or five years, exiting the market completely. That process has probably been sped up as a result of changes to the um, legislation around the private renter sector in the last four or five years particularly. On a personal level, I've got seven properties I'm losing money on month by month. We've got some long-term tenants uh, and I want to look after them. It needs, no matter what rent I charge, it needs to be affordable for the people in the properties. Today, a coalition of organisations, including The Big Issue and Shelter, have written to the Prime Minister, urging him to speed up and expand the legislation in the face of what it calls the insecurity that's plaguing 11 million private renters. We saw how quickly your government moved to introduce a mortgage charter in response to recent rising interest rates. The government's record in delivering on security for renters unfortunately stands in stark contrast. More than two months ago, the government introduced the Renters' Reform Bill. We welcomed this, but we are now left wondering why the bill hasn't been seen since. 
The bill isn't likely to make much progress until November either, with party conference season approaching and Parliament now in recess. Back in Brighton, Ramona and Daisy are looking for a change in the tide. Something has to give. Allowing tenants to have pets is great, but it doesn't necessarily change a housing system that has really failed a lot of the younger generation. That is indicative of a system that hasn't, that isn't working anymore. The government told this programme, we're committed to creating a private rented sector that is fit for the 21st century and works for responsible landlords while strengthening protections for renters. Our priority is ensuring that we get these reforms right. The date for second reading of the bill is subject to parliamentary scheduling and will be announced in due course. The outlook appears to be anything but sunny for tenants and landlords. With these reforms, the government have promised a fairer deal for renters. But will more regulation improve the climate or, as some fear, just make the situation worse? <laughs>